So this is the Fury B Fire Dancer 215. I did a review on it about a year ago and have not flown it ever since. So I've updated it to the latest Betaflight firmware. So before updating the firmware, I did make a copy of the dump files to a notepad. So that is where I'm at right now, but I'll go through the whole process from the beginning. Okay, so this is the notepad that I copied and pasted the dump file. So I did have Butterfly 3.5.0. Omnibus F4 SD firmware on it dated March 29, 2018 and it flew just fine but it is something to do while confined to the house right now is to update all of the firmware on your old quadcopters. So let's go into beta flight. Okay so here we are in beta flight so let's go ahead and connect the aircraft. Okay, so here what you want to do is go ahead and click update firmware and it has loaded the Omnibus F4 Air B firmware. So let me check it here. So that's the closest one to the original firmware. It was the Omnibus F4 Air B firmware. You can also download the legacy firmware but I find the Air B firmware is what is recommended. So go ahead and click on that. And the latest firmware already has been chosen, 4.1.5. And full chip erase has been selected here. So loading the firmware and flashing the firmware. Erasing what's on the board Then it should take a minute or two to rewrite the new firmware on the board There you go, it is starting to flash All right Programming successful, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect and we got a notice. Just hit apply custom defaults here. And here we go in the setups page. I'm gonna calibrate the accelerometer. There you go. But most of all, just go directly into CLI and go into that notepad that you had copied and pasted the dump file prior to this. And starting from the name, I'm going to highlight everything below that and it helps to move the mouse up and down to scroll a little bit faster. Okay. Okay, get everything. Copy. Go back into the CLI command line and go ahead and paste and hit enter and it is pasting everything that you have copied from prior and dumping it all into the CLI. So the parameters will be identically the same except you got a new firmware on it. So after it has finished, type in save, hit enter, and that is it. So calibrate accelerometer and let's check it out. Ports, Serial RX chosen, that's good. Configuration, well, check it out. I must have had the props reversed. So motor direction is reversed. So what you need to do here, um, what I did here is reverse my motor. So what I did was reverse each of the motor in uh, BL Halley 32, or this one has BL Halley S. ESC. So in BL Halley S configurator, you will need to reverse each of the motors and then come back over here and click on the motor direction is reversed for your quadcopter to know that you have reversed the motor direction. D-Shot 600 and idle is set to 5. I want to up it to 6. That's how I like it now. 
so okay 4 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz that is fine the CPU load is only 6% but I just need 4 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz that is fine for me accelerometer is turned on arming is set to 25 degrees I want to up that to 180 degrees so you can still arm your motors when your quadcopter is beyond the 25 degree angle when you land it on somewhere serial based receiver and S bus I have a XM or not XM this is the R XSR no this is the XSR receiver on here so S bus is chosen LED strip uh, it does have an LED strip in the rear of the quad OSD anti-gravity and dynamic filter beacon tone not turned on because it has a buzzer and everything else is turned on save and reboot okay so that's been done let's go to power and battery and I'm gonna hit three point oops 3.1 for minimum cell voltage and warning cell voltage to 3.2 hit save and fail safe tab throttle is on hold and it is set to drop that's exactly how I like it PID tuning page oh, look at that this is my old PID rates. I don't know if that's beta flight default PID rates on 3.5, but I'm going to up it to my values, which is 55, 60, 60, 65, and 70, 45 is fine. Rate profile, I'm going to set it to 0.9. 0.9 and 1.0 super 8 8 and 7 that's good and filter settings is set to default filters and the values are fine so I'm going to hit save and go to the receivers tab and turn on my transmitter I don't need a battery inserted for it to connect so let me just double check everything is correct T-A-E-R chosen let's see aux 1 aux 2 aux 3 aux 4 aux 5 okay let's turn it all off and channel or auxiliary 7 is set to the RSSI so I'm going to change that to auxiliary 7 and also the RC deadband I like to set my RC deadband and yaw deadband to 3 and 3 so my nervousness doesn't move the quad cutter when the sticks are in the center position and that's about it in the receiver tab and let's go to the modes tab let's see here arming set to auxiliary one top of the switch that's correct angle is set to auxiliary four that's wrong now I have it set to auxiliary two beeper set to aux three top of the switch that's correct air mode set to auxiliary four that's wrong again set to auxiliary two and I'm gonna hit hide unused tab and find flip over after crash I'm gonna put that into auxiliary 4 that's how I have my switches set up at the top of the switch save and hide unused modes and make sure everything is correct here which is so I'm gonna go over to the OSD tab and configure my OSD ah, this was my old setup huh? okay so two minutes let's see battery average cell voltage 
I like to turn that on now. So uh, craft name. Oh, that's a long name. Fit it right in there. Yeah. Let's see. Fly mode. And also the flip after crash arrow. This arrow is for you to push your pitch and roll stick toward that arrow direction when you're doing the uh, turtle mode. And that's just about it. Oh, let me turn on the warnings. And that is just about it. The VTX channel, this doesn't have smart audio or anything like that. So I don't need to turn that on. Current drone, let me turn that off. And turn off speed. And that's just about it. And hit save. All right. So that is just about it, guys. Everything is set up. So we go back to the setups tab and the RSSI is not reading correctly. It is at 30 something percent. So to correct that, I'm going to go into CLI and I'm going to type in get space RSSI and hit enter. And here are all the values for your RSSI and what I'm interested in is the scale here RSSI scale I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna cheat and do the copy thing so I'm gonna type in set in the command line space and then I'm gonna paste what I just follow, uh, co copied and I'm gonna backspace and erase the range of 41 and I'm gonna hit 100 and then hit enter. That should give me a better reading right off the bat. So type in save, hit enter. Okay, so now my RSSI reading is correct. And as I get closer and further away from the aircraft, my RSSI is changing. So there you go. That is just about it, guys. So Let's go and put some props on and check this baby out.